Recently I had a friend ask me to make him an oversized meeple out of wood. Normally these are about one and a half centimeters or five eighths of an inch tall and here they're about 10 inches tall or 25 centimeters. I had a lot of fun on that project so I thought I would try with one of my favorite games, Imperial Settlers. So these are the four pieces that come with the game and to start we have to load them into graphics software so that I can trace out the image and print it out to whatever size I want. Once we have it printed, we can head down to the shop. Here I'm just roughly marking the size of the boards that I'm going to need to cut to make it easier to handle. Once I have that laid out, I can take it over to the miter saw and just cut some rough squares. Once the boards are cut to size, I can use the templates that I drew to uh, mark out how I'm going to cut these boards. The last time I did this, I traced the template with a Sharpie. This time I'm just going to glue the template onto the board and then cut using the template as a guide. I'm using a glue stick here to make it easier to pull off the template when I'm done so I won't have to do as much sanding to remove the paper. The template here is two pages and I'm positioning it carefully on the board to avoid the knot in that upper right hand corner. So we can take our piece over to the bandsaw and start cutting. So as you can see, the glue stick worked perfectly. Um, this is a much better method than tracing it out with the Sharpie like I did last time. The paper peeled right off. There was a few little scraps and I'm going to use a scraper to uh, take those scrap pieces off. But overall, this was by far the best method. This video could easily be three times longer if I showed you all the sanding I had to do, even if I sped it up. This just takes time. It's the most important part of woodworking. It shapes the final shape of your object, it 
clears out any imperfections, it opens up the grain to help receive paint. So instead of showing you hours and hours of me sanding, I'm just going to jump cut to the next part. So the pieces have been fully sanded, and now I'm going to use this small handheld router to make the corners nice and round. You can do this by sanding the edges, but it doesn't come out quite as nice as using a router. And I like to do this just because the, the edges are kind of sharp once they come off of the bandsaw. You know, it cuts a perfect 90 degree edge, and they're a little rough to handle. This makes them feel much nicer when you pick them up. Before I paint, I like to seal the grain, and here I'm using shellac. It's a clear finish that dries in any temperature and is non-toxic. It's my favorite. I let them dry overnight, but I had moved them so we could pull the car back in the garage, and I stacked them up, and, well, they stuck together. <laughs> more sanding. This is a finished sanding, so no more power tools. This is all done by hand with 220 grit sandpaper, and it just helps remove any imperfections from the shellac. And it takes a while. Now it's time to apply the first coat of paint, and I realized I didn't have any paint brushes. So here I'm going to try and use a paper towel to uh, just kind of smear the paint on evenly. I'm using general water-based acrylic craft paint. Uh, it's not the best paint for this application, but I didn't want to try and match color with artist paint, and I found that with this craft paint it was close right out of the bottle. This method worked okay, but it was very wasteful, so I ended up buying a paintbrush. I gave each piece about six coats of paint and two more coats of shellac, sanding in between each. All done. They're a little bit bigger. <laughs>